So we have with us here a very good speaker, and he is one of our very own second semester student. Uh, please welcome with a big round of applause, Mr. Jay Shah. Thank you, Kanwar, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay Shah, and today we are going to be discussing about securing accounts. Now, you and I these days have hundreds, thousands, if not more accounts online, and typically they all consist of a username and a password. Now, it's not just enough to have a password. You need to have a good password. And what is a good password? Well, before we dive into that, let's play a game. On your screen, you will be shown a password like this one. Raise your hand. If you think that password is weak, if you think that password is weak, then raise your hand. So let's start. This one. How many people think that this password will be weak? Almost all of you? And that's a cue. Only numericals. Exactly, and this is one of the most commonly used passwords which are out there. Among the, even the statistics show that this is the most commonly used password. How about this one? Kitne logo ko lagta hai, ye password bhi crack ho sakta hai, asa nahi sir. Okay. How about this one? Ye kitne logo ko lagta hai, crack ho sakta hai? Nahi ho sakta. Okay. How about this one? If you feel. Okay. 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 Unfortunately, this is how we are tricked. You see, even though this password has all of this, this has 28 bits of entropy. And entropy, for now, you can just understand that entropy is a measure of randomness of a password. So this has 28 bits of entropy, and at a thousand guesses per second, it will take three days to crack this password. So the difficulty to guess is easy, and on the other hand, the difficulty to remember is hard. As you can see, stick figures so try. He was a trombone, no, it was trombone. And a okay by leg zero. So this is difficult to remember, but easy to guess. On the other hand, this password has 44 bits of entry. And at a thousand guesses per second, it will take 550 years to crack this password. And at the same time, it is easy to remember because we have already memorized it. So that is to say that through 20 years of effort, we have successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are easy for computers to guess, but difficult for us humans to remember. Now, moving on to password attacks. Now an attacker, what they might do is, they might randomly start typing in your account but if they are a little smarter, what they will do is use a dictionary. And a dictionary can be either physical, like a book, or more likely, a file wherein words are listed line by line by line. And what they can do is they can try this word as a password, this word as a password, this word as a password, and so on. And if you and I are using easy to guess passwords, the attacker will break into our account. <coughs> Now, this is a resource that I'd like to share with you, all of you. This is a dictionary which contains 14 million passwords. And, which have, uh, and it contains, these passwords are from uh, hacked websites and databases. So, pehle hack ho chuki websites ke sare passwords in the hair. And if you Google this, you can find it. And agar aapko apna password isme mile, then please change your password. You are vulnerable. Now, it is 
uh, at this point in life, I think we all know that we can't use dictionary words as our passwords, right? All of us know that we have to use some numbers, some digits, some letters, some punctuation, and in all to mix a password, banana, which is not found in a dictionary. But even then, we are vulnerable to what's called a brute force attack. And in this attack, the attacker tries all possible passwords which are there. And indeed, in the mobile devices, there are four digits which are minimally set. A four digits ka passcode hota hai in many mobile phones. In some, it might be six, but in many, this is a low bar that is set up. Ki bhai char digit ka passcode hai. Now, how many possibilities do you think ki if me ho sakti hai? Anyone? And who, who was here? Give me. 10,000. Exactly. So this has 10,000 possibilities or 10 to the power 4 because it has 4 digits 0 through 9. So 10, 10, 10, 10. And it becomes 10 to the power 4, which is 10,000 possibilities. It starts from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 9999. Nine, nine, nine. The 10,000 possibility is 0, 0, 0, 0. That's why we only count up to 9999. Now moving on to four letters. And before we move on to this, what do you think is guess how much time will it 10,000 possibilities, how much time will it take? Anyone? Yeah. Ten thousand possibilities are. If you have a Python ka program or C program, then you have to execute it. Hmm? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, they are saying ten seconds, they are saying ten minutes. So let's see what happens when we actually run the code. less than a fraction of the second. And this has tried all the way from 0, 0, 0, 0 up till 9999. So an attacker can literally crack this password within a fraction of a second. And uh, if you have an even faster computer, it can be even more fast. So now, let's talk about four letters. Now, how many possible combinations might there be in this? Like number not need, but just give me an exponent. 26 raised to 4. Very good. So this has 26 raised to 4 possibilities. And what if we also include lowercase and uppercase? Both. 52 raised to 4. Exactly. And this becomes 7 million passwords. And now let's see if it's still cracked in the way. But before that, if anyone wants to estimate how much time then feel free. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, anyone else? 10 seconds. 2 no seconds. Okay, last time I've got 10 minutes. That's what I say. Okay, let's see. This is, we are still in the lowercase a's, the b's. So this might take 3 to 4 minutes. So now we are getting somewhere. Abhi, if an attacker wants to crack our password, they will have to do some effort, 3 or 4 minutes really, right? But even that is not secure. Like, teen char minute is not a big deal for an attacker. And actually, um, if we go out in a coffee shop, for example, an attacker easily has 3-4 minutes with our phone, right? So I'll stop this, I'll not let this complete. Okay, how about four characters? And by characters, I am only referring to the ASCII characters that are out there. Abhi, how many of you know ki kitne ASCII characters hote hai? ASCII characters. 
Okay, the number is 128 ASCII characters and usme se the characters which we can see are 94. 94 characters are printable. The rest of the characters have backslash 0, backslash n. So those we cannot see. So this big number comes out to be 78 million possibilities. And if we execute this, abhi aapko kitna lagta hai ki kitna time lagi ga iska? Kitna? 30 minutes. Correct. That is, that is actually very close. Last time I said it was 3 to 4 minutes. Because it was 7 million. Abhi 78 million. So it would take around 30 minutes. But even this is not secure. Because 30 minutes we, it is uh, better than what we have before, what we had before, but it's not still secure. So how about 8 characters or 94 to the power 8? And this turns out to be this big number. So let's see it in there. Millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. So this is 6 quadrillion possibilities. And it is just to say that before an attacker can go through all of these, he might not even be on the planet anymore. Right? <laughs> so, that is to say, ki NIST, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, actually is, uh, is, a, is an agency of the United States of America that lays down cyber security guidelines and standards. So the first of which is the minimum password length. NIST recommends that the memorized secrets or passwords shall be at least 8 characters in length. Now you might be thinking, okay, if NIST ne recommend kiya hai ki ye 8 characters hai, then why did we call this password as weak? Isme to 11 characters hai. NIST recommend karta hai 8 characters, isme to 11 characters hai. Then why is this password classified as weak? If anyone can answer, please raise your hand. Okay, so for understanding that, you will have to dive deep into entropy. And entropy, for now, you just have to understand that this password is not as secure as this password. What you see here is an actual random string of characters and whose length is 11. And this is also a string of characters whose length is 11, but this is not random, this is truly random. So NIST recommends passwords like these, not passwords like these. And that is where this comes in. Yeah. So this, this password is based off of a base word and it has some common substitutions. And very sophisticated password cracking software. Now moving on to the maximum password length. Now this recommends that verifiers should permit subscribers chosen memorized secrets at least 64 characters in length. All printing ASCII characters as well as the space characters should be acceptable in memorized secrets or passwords and Unicode characters should be accepted as well. Now does anyone know what is Unicode? Okay, so just like ASCII has 94 printable characters, Unicode has nearly 1.5 lakh printable characters. So by adding this, the security of the password becomes very high. Now let's focus on this. Verifiers, and verifiers here refers to the website developers or app developers. So they should permit subscriber chosen memorized secrets of at least 64 characters in length. Well, this is saying that website developers should allow us to enter passwords which can be as long as 64 characters. Now that does seem long, but that is exactly the point. For instance, this password, as we saw, was much difficult than this password. Because this is a passphrase. So it's always recommended to use a passphrase over a password. 
because it's better to use a longer but easy to remember password than a shorter but difficult to remember password, as we saw earlier. Okay. The verifiers shall compare the prospective secrets against a list that contains values known to be commonly used, expected, or compromised. And that is to say that website developers should not allow us to use passwords obtained from previous breach purposes. This is just a fancy way of saying that if there is a website hack and its database leak, then we should not be able to use passwords that are in that database. The second thing, as we saw, is the dictionary words. They should not be allowed. The third thing is the repetitive or sequential characters. Example, A, 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 or 0, 0, 0, 0. The fourth one is the context-specific words, such as the name of the service, the username, and derivatives thereof. So that is to say that Google, ideally, should not allow me to use a password for my Gmail account, such as Gmail password. Or Amazon should not allow me to use a password for their service as password Amazon. Now, moving on to password hints. Does any of you know what this means? Hmm. Like we get any option to uh, choose that if you forget your password. Uh, so, like suppose, uh, where what is your birthplace or something like that? Correct. Very correct. And. Do you think this should be implemented? You implement karna chahi? Okay, he's saying nahi karna chahi, nahi karna chahi. Okay, anyone else? Nahi karna chahi. A lot of people are doing this. And why is that? I said you nahi karna chahi. Depends, like if it is just for the user's purpose and mm. if that is not known by the company, then it should be done, but if that company is also getting the data, then we should not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, according to NIST, this should not happen. Verifiers shall not permit subscribers to store a hint that is accessible to an unauthenticated claimant. And this shall not, they shall not prompt subscribers to use specific types of information, like what was the name of your first pet? This is because you and I have so much information about us online now that no one can go to social media and figure out that it was a pet's name, or that it was a pet's birthday. Thi thi. So it is very easy for an attacker to go online and figure out that okay, this was your password hint ka answer. And an example, as we can see here, this person has given 25 random things about himself. And it's me, it's like I, got, I got my first talk 13 years ago, a black lab named Dharma. Now if this person is using the first pet's name as a password hint, na, he's gone. Because anyone on the internet can figure out that this is his password. So, password update policy. Now what we as developers can do is that we can implement a system where passwords हर तीन महीने चेंज करने पड़ेंगे या फिर पासवर्ड्स एवरी मंथ चेंज करने पड़ेंगे या फिर एवरी सिक्स मंथ्स ड्यूरेशन वैल्यू हो सकता है पर डेवलपर्स कैन यूज दिस टू इंप्लीमेंट अ सिस्टम दैट मेक्स यूजर्स चेंज देयर पासवर्ड्स एवरी थ्री मंथ्स तो कितने लोगों को लगता है कि ये चीज इंप्लीमेंट करनी चाहिए पासवर्ड्स एवरी नाउ एंड देन चेंज करना रेगुलरली पासवर्ड चेंज करना ओके अब कितने लोगों को लगता है कि ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए हाँ यू क्यों नहीं करना चाहिए ओके या एक्सेक्टली ओके सो ही सेइंग कि अगर पासवर्ड्स हम यूजर से बार-बार चेंज कराएंगे तो यूजर्स पासवर्ड भूल जाएगा and that is very correct because if we give the user the slightest of inconvenience, na, the user will say, you know what, I my website using I would rather use this website. This may policy nahi hai. 
So when you make them change their password every now and then, they might forget. That is number one. Number two, अगर user को पता है कि एक महीने में मेरा password मुझे change करना है, then why would the user spend time in creating a complex password? The user will just say कि okay मुझे एक महीने में change करना ही है, let me you let me use a simple password. The third thing, what can happen is let's say let's take my example. मैं first time अपना password रखता हूँ password one. After one month, I change it to password two. After one month, I change it to password three. So even though technically I am changing my password every time, every month, क्या होगा अगर database leak हुआ and attacker ने देखा कि okay, जय ने अपना password पहले महीने के लिए password बन रखा था, in the second month it's password two. Now it is probably password three. Now ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है कि password three होगा ही. But that is a big threat as well. So, according to NIST, as I said, verifiers should not require memorized secrets to be changed arbitrarily, i.e. periodically. Now, there is also this concept called rate limiting. Jo humne previous 10,000 pass, 10, passcodes dekhe, within a fraction of a second, they all got cracked. Now what's stopping attackers from doing that? Rate limiting. If you recognize this, after a certain number of attempts, your phone will lock you up. It can be 5, it can be 10. But this is done to slow down the attack. 10,000 passwords, I a fraction of a second, may crack away. But at the same time, if I do this, it might take days, it might take months, और ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि आफ्टर 50 या 100 अटेम्प्ट्स फोन खुद को वाइप कर देगा, राइट? सो अकॉर्डिंग टू नेस्ट वेरिफायर्स शेल इंप्लीमेंट अ रेट लिमिटिंग मैकेनिज्म, एस आई सेड। नाउ कमिंग टू सोशल इंजीनियरिंग। नाउ सोशल इंजीनियरिंग इज़ नॉट अ टेक्निकल अटैक, इट इज़ मोर ऑफ़ अ ह्यू so it can be as simple as this. Name a song that takes you back to high school. Now a lot of people use their favorite childhood song as their password. A lot of them. And as the social media posts ke niche jitne bhi log comment karte hai, they are all susceptible to this. And as the bhot sari posts hai, jaysa ki as we saw, what was the name of your first pet? So all of these are trying to get information out of you. And as I said, it can be as simple as this or as complex as this, which I'm about to show. Now, kitne logo ko dark web pata hai? Dark web. What is dark web? Okay. And dark web ko access kaise kiya sakta hai? How do you access? Third, correct. So uh, recently, I had conducted a group experiment, just me. I gave them a Tor link, like this one, as you can see here. Now this is a very simple web page, a web application, I mean, that I designed. And what I did was. The purpose was to capture their usernames and passwords. The purpose of my experiment was to grab the credentials of my group. So what I did was, I gave them this link, and immediately I'll uh, I'll show you in the local host because Tor is very slow. If you have used Tor, you would know that Tor may speed or come out here. So what I did was, I made them register to this website. And I did not tell them key manual. I just told them key yeah, this is a here's a cool website. And I'll just log in. I mean I'll just register here. Yeah. So as we can see, welcome. If you are seeing this message, it means you are new here. I'm Ash, the creator of Shadows Forums. The purpose was to make them click this and this. And as I as I told you earlier, dictionary attacks B is my head. But we'll come to that later. So breached credentials. इसमें 
If I type in Jai Shah at the rate gmail gmail dot com and I hit enter, let's see what happens. Okay, so now you can see a list of usernames and a list of passwords, and all of this is from previously hacked databases. This is all from previously hacked databases and. I told them to also check your password if your password has been leaked or not. So if I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, and hit enter, okay, look at this. This password has been compromised these many times. If I enter, say, a very secure password, okay, this password has been compromised thirty-three times. So if anyone of you wants to chime in with their own password. Feel free to do so. We can check it over here if anyone wants. <laughs> okay, why? Well, good call. This was a social engineering attack because my friends, what they did was, they only have their password and username enter kar diya. But unfortunately, what they don't realize is that I am the creator of this. And that's why I can access the admin panel. And go to users. And would you look at that? So I had all of their usernames and all of their passwords with me. And this was all done through Tor, through this website specifically. And the social engineering attack, my name, he is starting saying the other. If I go back and I log out as admin, so, so registration may आपको नीचे देखेगा कि note do not use any use any of your existing passwords when registering. It's the best practice to keep your account safe. All of this was done to build that trust. कि हाँ भाई ये website secure है. And the moment they started trusting this website, I grabbed their credentials and I मैंने reveal कर दिया कि भाई I have your credentials. You should change them now. But this is how it went through, and every part of this website was designed to make you think that you are safe. For, for example, this this was disguised as a chat forum. कि यहाँ पे you can chat and you there is there are also rules, and the rules are they are pretty convincing as well. And at the end, I agree to them that this. Developer, so to speak, that you are seeing, Ash J Mayagi, was none other than me. <laughs> Now, moving on to two-factor authentication. I'm sure all of us have used this. And it's more commonly known as multi-factor authentication, where more than one factors are used. And factors does not mean one password, two password, three passwords. So we have a knowledge factor, we have a possession factor, and we have an inheritance factor. A knowledge factor is something that we know, like our passwords. A possession factor is something that we possess. As an example, our smartphone. जिसपे ओ टी पी आता है टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन का ओ टी पी हमारा स्मार्टफोन पे आता है राइट दैट इज समथिंग वी प्रोसेस एंड वॉट दिस डज इज ये अटैक वैक्टर नैरो कर देता है पहले इंटरनेट पे कोई भी हमारे पासवर्ड पे अटैक कर सकता था अभी इफ दे वॉन्ट टू ब्रेक इन टू माई अकाउंट दे ऑल्सो नीड टू प्रोसेस माई फोन जिसपे टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन का कोड आता है सो दे सो दैट minimizes the attack vector to only people around you and not anyone on the internet the third factor is called inheritance and inheritance is something that is unique to you more generally referred to as biometrics your fingerprint or your face id this narrows down the attack vector even further because now they would literally have to access you as the user To break into your account. That is to say, that is also this attack called machine in the middle attack. 
Now, when you and I are conversing with gmail.com or whatsapp.com, what can happen is there can be machines in between that might read what you are sending through. I'm not saying they will, but they can. And they can do that if your communication is not encrypted. That is something we will take a look later, but just know that machine in the middle attacks. If you are connected to a Wi-Fi router, then because you are connected to that and you are accessing the internet, the owner of this Wi-Fi router can see what you are doing. So if you are using GLS Aruba Wi-Fi, when you browse it, then everyone who is the admin of that router will be able to see what you are searching. Okay, complex passwords in practice. Now I can say that I can use 16 characters, 32 characters, this, that, that. But in using it, it's inconvenience. It's an inconvenience. So, fortunately there are solutions to this as well. As we'll see, SSO, single sign-on. And indeed, if you have seen this, login with Google or login with Facebook, you know what this is. So what this allows you to do is that if you are logged in with Google, you can directly register to the website with Google. Now, in back end, Google will not send your Google password to the website. It will send your username, but it will not send your Google's password. It would do something related to cryptography and it will send that string to the website. Again, cryptography will not, we will not be diving too deep into what that is. But there is also this term, password managers. I'm sure all of you have used these password managers. And what are the benefits of password managers, first of all? It stores the password of every account or any website we are going to be. And if we have forgotten, so we can... Yeah, exactly. It stores the, our passwords and it can also generate and store complex passwords. So, we don't have to Right? So, it makes our job easy. Now, what is the one big disadvantage of using this? Okay, so he's saying if the attacker gets access to our cookies, they'll know our password. That is one threat, but unfortunately, we'll not be diving into what cookies are for this session. Others, what is bad about using a password manager? Other answers, yeah. Exactly. If your password manager ka password gets leaked, then an attacker can see, acha. All of your passwords. Ki achha, iske paas Google mein ye password hai, Facebook mein ye password hai. They can see all your passwords. So it's like storing all of your eggs in one basket. However, I would say ki for most of us here, it is good to use a password manager. It is a net positive for all of us in this room to use a password manager as compared to not using it. Because if we don't use a password manager, it gets difficult to remember all of these passwords. So if we have one good password which, with which we can protect the password manager, we should be all set. Again, this is a personal choice. If you feel that you have a great memory and you can memorize 16, 32 character <coughs> passwords for hundreds of different websites, then go ahead and do that. But if not, I would recommend a use using a password manager. Some of the popular options out there are Apple iCloud Keychain, Google's own password manager, and Microsoft Credential Manager, among others. Now, this is another technology that is emerging known as pass keys. Now, do, do any of you have uh, heard this term before, pass keys? Okay. So what this is, is it is a keypad of a public key and a private key. And they have a complex mathematical relationship between them. 
And what happens is, if you have the private key, then, in, then by doing some complex cryptographic math, you can access the website if they have your public key. We will not be diving too deep into cryptography in this session, but moving on to web application security and more generally database security. So there is also this attack known as SQL injection or SQL injection. And what this does is, first let's say we have a user's table. Aajkal hum jo websites use karte hai, usme there might be a table for all of where all the users are stored. Right. It might look something like this. Username, password, birth date, blah, blah, blah. Now what happens if I do this? It's a very simple query. So let's start from users, where username equals chair. Now this query will fetch all records that are associated with my username. Now in the back end of the server, SQL is typically used with Python. And the syntax might look like this, where anything you type in the username field will be put plugged in here. So if I type in join, it's all good. We log in. But what if instead of typing in join, I do this? Where is the username field? And now, notice what's happening. This inverted comma was supposed to end here. But what I've done is, I have done an inverted comma and a semicolon in my query. And then I have executed delete from users, a semicolon and dash dash. Now what this means is, ye inverted comma yahan pe end ho jayega. And a semicolon signifies the end of the SQL query. Then we will execute a new query, delete from users, semicolon. And finally, we will do a dash dash. And SQL may dash dash comment la hota hai comment. This is C programming may it's slash slash in SQL, it is dash dash. And anything after the comment will be ignored. So ye is ignored. Jayegi. So let's see how this would look. So if you can guess ki isse kya hoga, can you even guess ki what this query will do? Okay, this query will delete all user records. Sare user records may say ye query delete ho jayegi. And what can happen is if someone enters something like this in your website now, they can delete all users in your website if you are not careful enough. There also might be this attack. Right, so let's start from users where username equals this and password equals this. Uh, what we can do is, in these fields, I can type in my username as J and my password as this. Now this is not my password, but this is a SQL injection attack, once again. So let's see what happens here. So let's start from users where username equals joy and password equals blank or one equals one. Now what's happening here is this. So let's start from users where username equals star and password equals blank or one equals one. Now this is a boolean condition because one will always be equal to one. This will evaluate to true. We can also set two equals two or three equals three. But in this example, we have used one equals one. So if we move ahead, we can uh, write this in parentheses. So select star from users where this or this. Where username equals joy and password equals that or one equals one. And for now, we can remove this altogether and just use this because end may yahi hai. That is what an or statement will do. Ye dono mein se koi bhi ek cheez sahi hogi na, then it will let us 
फायर द क्वेरी सो ये तो सही नहीं है मेरा पासवर्ड ब्लैंक तो हो नहीं सकता बट दिस इज करेक्ट वन विल ऑलवेज बी इक्वल टू वन सो वी कैन डू दिस व्हिच इक्वल्स दिस एंड वी माइट एज वेल रिमूव द वेयर कंडीशन सो व्हाट दिस विल डू सिलेक्ट स्टार फ्रॉम यूजर्स इज इट विल एक्सेस ऑल यूजर्स फ्रॉम द डेटाबेस एंड इट विल शो यू each and every user's personal information so this is another attack that can happen if you and i are not careful enough to sanitize user input now this was discovered in 1998 so kafi purana attack hai and it's very basic as well and abhi ke systems mein 99% ye aapko dekhne nahi milega because systems mein this vulnerability has been patched now moving on to phishing phishing is an attack when an attacker pretends to be something like google.com and if you visit their website unki website pe bhi aapko aisa hi dekhne ko milega but if you enter your username and your password in here then those will not go to the google but those will go to the attacker let's see how that might look like So if you take a look here, I will enter my email. So I shall at gmail dot com. This is not my email, by the way. <laughs> and I will enter a random password, and I will say sign in. Okay. So I was redirected to Google, but notice what's happened in the back end. I have my username. Sorry, I have my email, and I have my password as well. So this is to say that phishing can target users into believing that they are on Google.com, but they are not on Google.com. If you notice the URL here, it is not of Google, but it is 172.27.95.8. So this is not of Google.com, and that is why. we always have to be vigilant in what we do and what we are with that we come to the conclusion of fundamental of cyber security i would like to thank harshal sir jenny ma'am karthik sir vishal sir and all faculties who helped me throughout this journey thank you <laughs>